All right, we're here to look at plays. Five plays. Stick around. Greetings and welcome back to Five Play Friday, the show where we take a look at game video, analyze all of the things so that we can get better as basketball officials. Greetings again, everybody. My name is Greg Austin with uh, BetterOfficial.com. We craft video to help basketball officials get better and take control of their officiating career. If this is the video content you find valuable as a basketball official, make sure to do all the things. Hit the like, the subscribe, and the notify so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We live stream every Wednesday and Friday during the basketball season. Put your voice in the game. Come join us on the live stream and we can all get better together. Before we start any show, we talk about the fantastic show supporters who fuel our broadcast. Paul Figlia. Scott Calvin, Kevin Cochran, J.J. Jemison, and Ted Hader. Much appreciated and much love. If you want to support the show, there will be a link down in the show notes below. So play, let's take a look at play number one. So on this play, this is this play, you know, it's just a simple situation where we have a closed look on a play. This would be a play that we would look at and say, okay, this is an analyze my game video play. How did I end up? How did the crew end up in this position? What are the habits and fundamentals we have on the play? Right? Sometimes despite our best efforts, we end up without the look that we want on the play. So this is a good play for us to look at and talk about all of the things, right? As we like to say. Ball goes into the post, right? And we've got our trail working in a low position, right? Trail has a look in this instance on the feet. No, oh, I see. Has a look in this instance on the feet of this matchup that is in the center's primary. If we, uh, in a perfect world, I think we'd want our center to move, or our, our lead rather, to move out and have a better angle on this play, maybe from here. But as for right now, we have great position on this play. But for some reason here, we our trail now has a count on this on-ball matchup. Uh, I, I don't know if this is something that the crew pre-gamed, but this play belongs to the lead, right? We can help with feet on a play like this, but this play belongs to the lead. Right? And now we've position adjusted. We have this secondary defender who's digging from the outside, and we need a look on that play. We're just in a tough spot here as the trail official on this play. Right Here we have an open look. We're in great shape on this play, but our player moves to the right. When a player, a ball handler here, moves to the right, we want to move to the left so that we can maintain an open look on the play. We're a little late in doing so on this play, and we end up with a stacked look. 
right? Closed looks can happen. They, you know, we're going to, we want to anticipate plays so that we have open looks on plays. Sometimes we guess wrong or we are slow to react. We are watching something else. Our player moves in front of us. We're not in a position. We're not able to get into position. All we can do in this instance is make the attempt to get down below and see the open look on the play. In the absence of that, we just have to use our judgment from where we are on the court. In this instance, head position really seems to be focused up as opposed to staying with our shooter. That's what appears to be the case, but we don't have a look on that play. So we didn't have a look on that play. Maybe we're disappointed that we didn't. Maybe we're unsure. Maybe we missed something, et cetera. But what are we going to do? We're going to move on, man. We got to get down the court. We got to officiate the next play. So this is a great example of when we analyze our game video, looking for habits and fundamentals and our reactions on plays. So in this instance, we end up here. Let's say we come down the court the next time and the coach says, the coach has a question about the play, right? What are we going to do? They're going to, they're going to say, how could you not call a foul on that last play? He got him right on the arm. It's just like, what are we going to do? All we could do is say, look, I was working hard. I did not have a look on that play. I did not see a foul from my angle, right? The coach is b below us here a little bit. <laughs> of course, he's, he's, a, he's the defensive coach, but let's say it was our offensive coach, right? In this instance, he'd have a better look on this play than we do, right? right? We just have to be aware of that and fall on our sword. So a simple play, one that gives us though a chance to look at all the things and analyze our game video for habits and fundamentals. Now, when we, when we analyze our game video, we want to see, did I get the call correct? Did I, we're, we're super curious about that, but we're always looking for the f habits and fundamentals that led to either the missed call or miss no call, but just the closed look on a play and not being in the best position, et cetera, and the things that may have affected us, right? So this is just a great example of a play where we are going to analyze game video, looking for habits and fundamentals so that we can get better for next time. And in, in spite of all of our best efforts, right, sometimes we end up and we do not have the look on the play, right? We just have to own that fact. We are working hard to get that look but sometimes events conspire, players surprise us. You know, he, he looked like he was gonna go right and then he immediately went left and I had a closed look on a play. All we can do is officiate from that position the best that we can. You know, we're looking for high certainty on plays and get the plays correct. So a great play from Chris that gives us the opportunity to analyze the habits and fundamentals on a play. All right, let's take a look at play number two. All right, what a play. This is a good one. What do we have on this play? How are we going to adjudicate this play? What are all of the variables on this play? Oy, oy, oy. What a mess. So we have screening action on this play. Teammate of the ball handler. The ball handler is going to the basket. Teammate runs into the path of the defender. These are not players who are moving in parallel, right? The, the teammate of the ball handler, shooter, runs into the path of the defender. The defender, there is contact, larger player, smaller player, right? There is contact, maybe an extension of the arm, and the smaller player goes flying 
on this play. How are we going to adjudicate this one? Oi, oi, oi. That's a tough one. I'm going to put that there. So that is illegal contact by Black. That is a team control foul. In the absence of a try being released, right? When the, when the foul occurs here. Let me make sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah. When the foul occurs here, the try has not yet been released. An offensive foul would cause the ball to become dead and no goal can be scored. If we... Right? So in this instance, the officials ruled a double foul. That there was a foul both by the screener and a foul by the player uh, essentially pushing through the illegal screen. So in that instance where we have a double foul, would this goal count? We have a double foul. Now, we know that continuous motion applies when there is a defensive foul, but not when there is a double foul. If that was the ruling on this play, this ball would become dead and that goal should not be scored. Oi, oi, oi. Right? So that is a super tough play because, first of all, officiating larger players against smaller players, right? There's always an imbalance. The smaller player runs into the larger player, no impact. The larger player runs into a smaller player, even with the same amount of energy and force, and the small player goes flying, right? And so we can, there's, a, there's an imbalance there. On this play, a double foul is ruled because the level of contact from white rose, I think. So that was the ruling on the play. You know, there's a, there's a feeling that the white player extended, embellished, anticipated, did something more at the point of contact. When you have a player, though, running into your path, a first reaction is going to be to extend something, right? Uh, and then I think we have a big player against small player vibe on this play. Our smaller player goes flying. To me, we're going with the initial foul of team control foul on this play. Others may disagree. The, what, say the actions by White has to be something but if it is dead ball contact in this instance, first of all, it happens. I mean, the reason it's dead is because the initial, con I mean, the, the distance of time between when the foul occurs and when the contact or the reaction by the white player is so small. <sighs> it's a tough play, tough play. I've got a team control foul. The subsequent action is incidental. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she could see her, but it's not legal screening action, right? I could see that you are about to set a screen on me. But am I responsible to avoid contact if you are not in a legal legal screening position? I would say on that, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. As with all good things, it's time to move on and take a look at our next video clip. Let's go.
All right. A Euro step taken to the nth degree, an extreme change of direction, an extreme change in the speed of the player. What do we have on this play? Traveling is ruled. Is that the correct call? As with all traveling plays, and you know, if we're looking at this play and we're just saying, boy, that looked really funny, right? Then we can, you know, we can see why people would think there's a traveling call, but it's all about when the pivot foot, when the player holds the ball with a pivot foot. Let's take a look at this play and break it down and determine when this player actually picked up and was holding the ball. At this point, they are not. They are dribbler. There was contact. No call on that. And at some point here, if it's at this point where a player is holding the basketball with their left foot on the floor, this is their pivot foot by rule. And the subsequent right foot and then returning the left foot to the floor would be a travel violation by rule. That's what was ruled here. But if the gather did not, or the by gather, I mean when the player picks up the ball and is holding the basketball... Doesn't occur. Oh, come on, man. If we don't determine that the player is holding the basketball until this point, with their right foot, whether they gather the ball either in the air or with their right foot on the floor then this would be a legal play. So it's all about the determination of when the player is holding the basketball. And of course, we know at other levels, <coughs> of course, we know at other levels, NBA, right? There is a something known as a gather step or a zero step. NCAA men has been instructed to treat a play like this as if it is legal, whether they gathered with the other foot or not. So we know that that's a variable on these plays. And that's something that affects the stakeholders in the game, the kids, the moves that they learn, etc. But on a Euro step play like this, the subsequent action, the step and the step and the a change of direction and the extreme change in the speed of the player are things that can lead us to think, well, that has to be something. Right, But this play is essentially all about when that player was holding the ball. That would determine when their pivot foot was established. If that pivot foot is lifted and returned, obviously it's a travel. And if it is not, if it is lifted and not returned, in spite of this change of direction and change of speed, this would be a legal play. So that is fundamentally what we are determining on a play like this. We'd want to have certainty that they had the ball, was holding the ball with that left foot if we are going to rule a travel on the play. Seeing plays like this where there's such an extreme, right, the understanding of Euro steps, what is a player doing when they're Euro stepping? They are changing direction and they are changing speed, almost always the two in tandem. And they're doing that in an effort to create an open opportunity to shoot the basketball or or make a pass, etc. <clears throat> so that is the purpose. That is the intent. That's the desired result. So we can't say, well, simply because of the change in speed or change of direction or the combination of the two, well, that's got to be something, right? We want the accuracy of understanding wh when the player was holding the basketball, which determines when what their pivot foot is on the play. All right, a simple travel play, Euro step extreme uh, change of direction and speed, 
Um, but just a chance to focus on, again, why this is an NFHS point of emphasis is the understanding and always in traveling plays, understanding which is the pivot foot. And a great chance to review that on that one. But let's take a look now at our next video clip. All right, block charge play, but something that just jumps off the, to the screen. Man, what a small end line. <laughs> wow, wow. We're going to hustle to the end line here to receive this play? We'll be smacking the wall. Wow. <laughs> or through the exit door. That is, that is a tough end line to work. That's something that we experience in high school games, obviously. But we have a transition play, lead, a lot of bodies, a lot of bodies, block charge play. That player is legal. But we're going with a block. We are scoring the goal. And we have engagement with the coach. After the call. Right. So I have a charge on this play. Our defender is legal prior to the player alighting. Wait, is alighting or alighting? Prior to the player leaving the floor. <laughs> Yeah, a lighting is leaving the floor, right? So, what would we what are the things that we would look at on a play such as this? I'm going to go here. No, I'm going to go here. Now, we are new lead on this play. We have bodies between us. Right, we are in. Are we? Would we describe our position as a strong position to receive the play and see the defender, or would are we uh, impaired somewhat? We're impaired by two things on the play. One is we have not gotten to the end line. We really have no ability to get to the end line in this situation because of the absence of space, and we have bodies in between. We need to be aware always of where our crew is. Are they potentially in a strong position? And do we have to fight for a call that we have less than perfect information about? Always a factor in our determination of when our whistle may come, when we should hold a whistle for a beat or hold the whistle for two beats on a play such as this. But in the end, our defender is legal and we really have a tough look here as lead. We've got a teammate of the defender. We've got an offensive player here, offensive player here. We're not in an ideal position. We are moving. Potentially our eyeballs are bouncing, etc. We could get a fist up and process, which the official does on this play. but we are going with a block, right? In this situation, I see. Probably best to avoid this interaction with the coach en route, right? Right, get to our reporting area here. And then, I mean, what's gonna happen next? 
always when we when we anal- when we're working a game, we want to know what's going to happen next. Are we going to have an opportunity to explain this call to this coach? If we are staying table side, yes, we are. NFHS mechanics, we're staying table side here, and we would have the opportunity to explain what we saw on the play to the coach as needed. But we're not a fan of the interaction with the coach en route to reporting, right? Right, so a block charge play as lead, tough predicament. In my judgment, we got the call incorrect. A lot of variables on the play, a lot of things to think about, right? As as a, a lead in this position, this is our call. We are the primary official on this call, but we do have a crewmate who may be in a better position. And if I'm in a weak position and I hold my whistle for a beat, maybe um, an official with better position could come in. And in the absence of then coming in, all right, now I will come in and I will put the whistle on the play and I will go with what I saw. What I saw was this was a block. We're going to score the goal, etc. cetera. Um, so those are my takeaways on that play. It's a good play. We're always analyzing our block charge plays. And almost always we want to anticipate are we officiating that prime that defender on the play? Did we see them get into position? Do we have an open look on the play? And did, in the end, did we get the call right? And what may have led to us potentially not getting a call right? That is that. And with that, let's move on to our next play. All right. So this is a play with, uh, there is a backcourt call that is ruled on the play and that is potentially correct, incorrect. But this is really an analyze your game video play, right? We're analyzing all of the things in our game, right? So let's take a look from that perspective on this play. Right, we are trail has the on ball matchup in this situation. Right, trail has on ball matchup. Let's do this. Let's do this. So our trail ha- is officiating this action. Our center is enamored with the ball here, and is also officiating this action. Right? We are attracted to the ball. The ball is interesting. What's going on with the ball handler, etc. But in this situation, our trail official should be officiating the next wave of defenders on this play. Is this player here going to double team and trap? Is this player going to do the same? Right, Step up here, etc. We need to officiate across the court and find the next defender on the play. Right, now the ball does tend to come towards the official, right? We'd wanna be aware of this action, but it is being officiated by the trail in this instance. What I would want is our center official to be moved up to here to be able to see through this on ball action or this uh, off ball action here, but definitely be further up the court. 
right? In the end, we have a backcourt ruling, right? What is the status of this player? What is the status of the ball in this instance? If this player has, whoops. In the backcourt. This player would have backcourt status. The ball has yet to achieve frontcourt status on this play. Subsequently, the player dribbles in the backcourt and therefore maintains backcourt status. There should be no backcourt violation on this play. But this is a situation where our official has ended up in a position where they are officiating down and they, uh, they are looking in the well, as I like to say. And this is not so many here would agree that, that we've gotten this call incorrect. So if we we're analyzing our game video, I was in the game. I put a call in the game. In the end, the call was incorrect. What, was the, what are the reasons for that, right? In this instance, I'd say, okay, I've identified the fact that I was observing a play I should not have been observing. I wasn't anticipating the next play, which were the players I should have been officiating. And I was surprised by the play. <clears throat> in addition, I'd say if I find myself in a play where I am looking down, I'm often inaccurate. How can I avoid the situation where <clears throat> plays occur in front of me and I'm looking down? By improving my position. In order to improve my position here, I would have to anticipate better and show better fundamentals in transition. I've recognized that. Okay, I go out and do my next game. I have a transition play, and now I'm thinking about doing those things. Avoid that play. You're, that's not yours. Officiate the players you're supposed to officiate. Put yourself in a position. Anticipate what's going to happen next, and we're better off for it. There you have it. So this is our second play where we're, it's the, the purpose of the play is really just to focus on our positioning. Ultimately, there's a call to be evaluated. But our positioning as a crew, habits and fundamentals, were we officiating the correct thing? Were we looking at the right thing at the right time to make the right call, et cetera? How could we improve? Right? We, anytime we watch our game video, there's always things to improve upon. And so that's a great clip that helps us with that. But now let's move on to our next clip. All right, crazy town. Let's see. Right, so we have a situation where obviously, I don't know the context of this clip, but obviously it is an end of game scenario, right? Tensions are high, full court press, etc. There's a throw in, something happens on this throw in. 
What do we have? Did the defender touch the ball? If they did, was that a legal touching of the ball? What are the things that we think about when we analyze plays on throw-ins? One of the things we always like to counsel is there are a million things that can happen during a throw-in. If we focus on what is illegal and not what is unusual or what gives me pause, what do I know is illegal Then, and, and not react to something that occurs, but rather allow a moment to process what has occurred, waiting for is something, did something illegal happen on this play, right? then we're in a better position to adjudicate a play such as this. Now let's look at all of the things here on the play. And the player has the ability to move. They are the thrower. We know that they have some rules and restrictions regarding them. They're, the defender on this play has rules and restrictions uh, uh, that they can have to conform to as well on the play. Let's move forward. Now, our player suffers a momentary loss of control of the ball. Where is the ball? Where is it in space? Is it over out of bounds? Is it over the court? What does that, is that any sort of factor on the play in terms of the restrictions on the defender? The defender could not contact the ball if they violated the throw in plane to do so. But if the ball is on the other side of the plane, there is no restriction about their ability to contact the basketball, right? If they reach through the boundary plane and contact the ball, then I know what we have. But in the absence of that, it would appear to be a legal play. It's also a question of whether the defender even touched the ball on this play. It's possible that they did, but would that touching rise to the level of a violation or not? If the defender touched the ball and then it was subsequently, if they did touch the ball and it was subsequently caught by the thrower, what would we have in that instance, right? The ball had been released by the thrower, contacted by the defender, knocked, and the thrower then contacts the basketball. Well, that would be an out-of-bounds violation by rule. But in the end, we have a throw-in pass released. We obviously have an explosion of energy from the defensive coach on this play. And the bench and the supporters. Wow, not a lot of room on that sideline. <laughs> I like the discreet hold by the defender here. He's like holding his hand. Ay, ay, ay. What a play. What a play. Right? So a great play to look at and remember waiting for illegal. During throw-ins, we're going to see unusual activity, things I never thought I'd see, a surprise, etc. But we're waiting for illegal in order for a whistle to be blown on the play. The play. Imagine that play happening in your game. Obviously, it's you know, or or in your playoff game, or in your state final game, right? Super tense moment of the game. So there is a change of direction in the ball, but black is bad. You know, their hand is moving in a backwards direction. High certainty. The way that the ball moves would appear, I don't know. I cannot say definitively from this angle that White touched the basketball. 
Hey, thanks for joining us today for Five Play Friday. If you find this valuable content as a basketball official, it be a great time to do all of the things. Make sure that you hit like, subscribe, and notify so you don't miss out on any of our new video content. Allow me to thank those who fuel our broadcast, our tremendous show supporters, Paul Figlia, Scott Calvin, Kevin Cochran, J.J. Jemison, and Ted Hader. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? <clears throat> There'll be a link down in the show notes below and a link above. Tremendous. We have additional video content available for you here. I have personally selected this video. YouTube has selected this video. You select your video. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.